I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Recording Sun of the Board. Progress. The time is 6.31. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting on March 12th, 2024. And motion we approve the minutes from March 12th. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing, Jeff. Alrighty. Our first new business is going to be our accounting contract. Jeff. Yes. Um, so last year we switched accountants. Um, we hired Aponte and Aponte. Um, and so far I've been very pleased with, with the work they've done. They've um, gotten us caught up. They got us free cash earlier than last year. Um, been working really hard. Uh, put together a proposal that was an increase of $200 a month, um, which is... Uh, sorry, I'm trying to think about what percentage that would be, but um, so about $2,400 a year. Um, so I think it, it would be well worth it. I mean, it, I've, I've been really impressed with, with their responsiveness and their, um, their ability to just jump right in and <laughs> help us figure out what's going on. No, I mean, I was very impressed with their ability to, within short order, get us all caught up and free cash this year was months ahead of where it was last year. Yeah. Um, so I've been very happy. And we've had many discussions about how hard it is to find good municipal accounting to begin with. So if we have a good municipal accountant, I'm all for continuing that arrangement. Great. And, and I think 2400 sounds very reasonable for... And we'll look, you will see in the budget that it's our expenses for accounting are going down from last year, partially because we because didn't know software, what we yeah. were going to do. And so we had... Right. Uh, and then that software that we can discontinue use of... Right, we're paying. We have different software that's less expensive. But how right, but weren't we running two softwares yeah. last yeah. fiscal yeah. year? Yep. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be lovely. Yep. yep. Um, all right. Do you need a motion or anything like that? Uh, yes, that? please. All right. All right. Okay. I motion we is it extend the contract or is it renew or um, extend? Yeah. All right. So I am I motion we extend the contract with a Ponte and a Ponte at a rate of. A two hundred dollar a month increase. Fifty two hundred a month. Yep. Fifty two hundred a month. Yeah. Totally. It was five thousand a month last. Oh, I said with a year, right with a two hundred dollar increase. Increase. Yes. 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 Yep. Okay. All right. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All righty. Next up is the Frontier uh, E and D request. Yes. Um, so, Frontier excess and deficiency. And if any of the school committee members want to correct me if I get this wrong, um, is basically the region's free cash. Mm -hmm. um, so funds that they budgeted for but didn't spend, they are requesting a reallocation of $200,000 um, to do maintenance and equipment needs and replacing the fire alarm panel system. So uh, we have... 45 days from March 12th to vote. Um, and if we don't vote, then it passes anyway. So. Okay. This was an item that we had, or some of these were items we had talked about at the Frontier Capital Planning Committee meeting. Um, so I'm glad to see they're being taken care of in-house without requiring you know, further action. Um, I have no concerns about it at all. Crystal, do you have anything you wanted to? I have no concern. I mean, a fire panel and stuff. I would guess the fire panel is probably the... That's the big ticket item, yeah. The big ticket item, and... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need a working fire yes. system. Yes. No, no one perishing in, in horrible flames is good. Um, do you just need a, a regular motion on that? Yes, please. All right. Crystal? I motion we allow for the use of E&D for the request put through Frontier. All right. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing, Jeff. Thank you. Wonderful. All righty. Next up, we have mowing bids. Yep. Another quick one. So I have the bid prepared. Um, the recommendation was to make the rule for award the lowest bidder um, with the option of taking the lowest bidder within a certain percentage if they have all electric. So... Um, wanted to ask the select board what that percentage was, make sure that that was okay, because we had discussed, you know, um, hiring an all-electric mowing company. So if possible. If possible, yep. If we even get any bids for it. 
yeah, so my thought is, you know, looking at something comparable to what we've paid in the last few years, you know, we could possibly go 10% higher for all electric, maybe five, you know, and again, these are just numbers I'm throwing out, you know, 5% um, higher for part electric, if there's a way to, you know, because partial electric, I think leaf blowers, weed whackers, things like that are a cost are easily to, you know, transition to electric versus, motors. versus going out, you know, in order to meet this bid and buying electric mowers. Yeah. Well, and, um, and we can leave it to the bidders to justify in their bid what their percentage is. If they come in and say, we, we are a 40% electric company, they can come in and they, they can say, you know, our average job is a $2,000 job and $1,400 of that is, is, is dollars that we would attribute to these electric vehicles. We're going to say that we're a 70% you know, operation or whatever. Um, so that we don't have to spend the next month and a half trying to determine exactly how we want to judge that. And then just set it as 100% electric would be a 10% increase and whatever percentage they come in at would be that percentage increase. So if they if they come in and say that they're a 60% electric shop and their bid is within 6% of the of the okay. lowest fully gas bid, you know, and, and if the lowest bid is a 20% shop, they can also be prorated by that 20, by that 2% because right. they're, you know, basically we can we can adjust all of the bid percentages by the percentage that they are of ten percent of all electric, um, and then you know that that sort of covers all of those contingencies. Does that make sense to? Yep. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, th there's going to be there's a cost to going all electric because mm -hmm. obviously it often involves more expensive equipment, um, but. And just for you know disclosure for everyone, the the, the bid we're looking at is eighteen thousand dollars currently. The, the current contract. Um, I think it was about sixteen or seventeen. Okay. Year, so if we if ones. we if we did have a bid come in in comparable prices, again not talking about inflation, but comparable prices with with full electric, we'd be looking at spending another sixteen ish hundred dollars on that bid. Currently, for inflation, maybe it's going to cost the town another two thousand or so dollars. I think that's a reasonable amount to. I, I can justify that in terms of cost of town for an all electric mowing. Uh, I think it's you know a worthwhile endeavor. Right. I mean, we can't obviously double the price to have all no. electric. So <laughs> no, but I think ten percent for fully electric, you know, rated rated down to zero for fully gas would be would be appropriate. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do you need a vote on that, or do you just no, need clarification? No. Okay, great. All right. Uh, last order of new business is ditches. Yeah, um, just been getting calls about ditches um, and concerns about uh, water and fields flooding. Um, so I, I will say that I drove around, and this was. Um, last week and the week before it's been a little bit drier but the last couple of weeks i've been driving around hadley and deerfield as well because those are some of the examples of towns that at least people in sunderland look to <laughs> and say those towns are doing it right um and i i saw water in their fields too uh, it's a wet spring so i i don't know how much of it is related to the ditches but um i know that there is still a desire of some people in town um, to have the town take over maintenance of the ditches. Um, currently, we're not legally allowed to um, because they're on private property. So, you know, I think that where the town had left it previously is it doesn't make sense for the town to take it over unless all property owners agree because if you have one property owner that doesn't and they don't maintain the ditch, then there's no point in maintaining the rest of it. Right, because it's going to hit that that filled in, right. uncleaned out space and it's still going to backlog. And right. So basically, 
when we say all property owners agree, we're looking at getting an easement from all property owners to be able to drive onto their property, clean with town equipment, clean out the ditches. I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't think that we have the equipment. I think that we'd probably have to rent it or whatever. Or hire it. Or hire it. But we would still need, is it, do we, do we need an easement in yes, order to yes, do that? Yes, we would need some sort of property interest in order to yeah. do work on, on their, on private property. And in the past, requests for easements have been sent out and... Don't know about that. Okay. So, I mean, maybe that's the first step is that we send out a, a letter to all of the people who would be, who would have easements that we would need to get. Just saying, hey, like this is something the town is considering doing. Not saying we're doing it, but we're considering doing. If we were to come to you saying we'd like to get an easement, would you be willing to sign one? And if everybody comes back and says, oh yeah, we'd love for you to do that, that'd be great. Then we have a whole different discussion. If we come back and thirty percent of the people are saying yes and seventy percent are saying heck no, get off my property, then we we have a different conversation. Well, there's a cost going to be associated with that, right? With the easement. Or yeah. The letter? Yeah. Yep. So we can ask for donations of easements, um, but otherwise we have to pay fair market value and get them assessed, uh, appraised. And, and um, right. There so, is a cost to it. Yeah. So that's another concern, right? Yeah. We're not just sign here. Yeah. No, I know. Um, it's a ditch, though. Come on. How much could it cost, really? <laughs> So that's, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but right. But if, if if they want to drive through your yard yeah. to get oh, uh, to that little brook behind uh, your house, yeah. And there's also what what I learned from when we did this on North Main Street is the value of the easement is proportional to the size of the property, and so you know if they have a small property and the ditch takes up a big portion. They could be getting a lot more than somebody who has a big ditch on their property but has a big property. And so there might be some, you know, neighbor disputes about that too. But, you know, we could at least certainly make, um, you know, compile that list and reach out to the property owners and just gauge interest in either. Do we have an idea from, because I know at one point there was a ditch committee that disbanded, right? Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea of how many properties, individual homeowners, there are along these so-called ditches? I, I can look in the report. I don't know off the top of my head. Right. If okay. It's in there or not. All right. Yeah. No, I'm just wondering if we're looking at... I think we're going to be looking at quite a large-ish... I got one going to my backyard. I'm sorry? I got one going to my backyard. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess the question I have is, rather than moving the direction of having the town take over doing it, can we move in the other direction where we find a way to incentivize through tax breaks or something like that the people who have them on their property, maintaining them properly? Like, if, if can we have some sort of reimbursement thing where, where if you come to us and show us that you hired a contractor to come out here and clean out the brush and whatnot, the town will reimburse you for that, that kind of thing. Right, but I think the bigger issue becomes... and. And again, we're, we're, I'm not going to guarantee that this is a true ditch. Mm -hmm. But if we take from the bridge near our street down to where that goes, that if one person doesn't clean out their chunk, yeah, you've in, you know you've given an incentive to everybody else, and but you still have business. no yeah. result because everybody didn't do it. Yeah, that's a tough one. So I think you're. I think it's a it's a tough one because the whole thing has to be maintained in order for this to work. At least in, from what I can understand of it, it does. Yep. And that's been the problem in the past. Right. Is you can have some nice, beautiful, wide open, but if it backs up in yep. front of all that. Or if you just have one problem with beavers right by a, a bridge and all of a sudden you have a, a flooded field you know yeah it's a tough one and and i don't want to minimize the the flooding and the damage and in the the water problems this is doing to people's fields i'm just i'm not sure what the right way to move with that is i think we need to 
Look at that, though, anything old that can get dug up from that ditch committee. Yep. No. And, you know, I'm sure there's multiple, there's obviously not just one ditch in town, there's multiple ones. And even if we can work towards a five year plan on them or something, you know, we're going to take care of this section or, you know, get the information. But, you know, this section here is priority one, this is priority two, you know, to work on getting the easements and the whatever we might need to be able to actually do this. Yep. And, again, once we know where they are, once we can evaluate it, maybe we attempt a pilot on one of those chunks. Right, we go through, we we identify the property owners, we look, you know, and, and that one chunk is what we take and kind of test it out, right? Is cleaning this out, is, were we able to get first legally what we need to be able to do this work? Well, I think you make a good point that, it, that we can treat each ditch separately. That if we if we have everyone agreeing to an easement on one ditch, cool. The rest of them can all say no, and we can go ahead with that one ditch. And also, if we work from the river backwards, if we have the first ten people from the river back upstream that all say yes, that's a worthwhile section to work on because then everything downstream of that is you know that's all protected. The only problem you have is when when, when you the first person that says no, everything you know is a problem from there. But if we can you know get get chunks that are or even identify problematic chunks maybe that all of the, the maybe the whole thing's not an issue maybe there's just three or four places where beavers like to make some trouble or where there's a little bit of a curve in it or a funkiness or some rocks or something like that where it gets you know gets trapped up if we anecdotally collect information about where the problems are if we get easements on those two or three spots we might be able to do some the maintenance that's helpful without needing to have everybody um, especially if the property owners who are having flooding are the same property owners who have the sections that are problematic on their property, they may be very motivated to give us the, the easement we need in order yeah, to... Yeah, so I, do, I think you know. that's probably a little more the opposite, right? Probably the people who are reaching out to you are people who are maintaining their sections very well. And the people down upstream of them are not, and they're getting... Yeah, no. So I, I believe that's probably more the issue we're looking at here. Um, and Nathaniel, since you mentioned the word stream, that's another thing to think about is at some point ditches can be considered perennial streams, at which point we have to talk to the Conservation Commission if we're doing anything. Um, so I will also start a conversation with them about whether they consider any of the ditches streams. And, and if, if they are, if let's say we decide that all the ditches are streams because at least mine certainly runs enough of the year that I think it would be... Uh, a good you know, argument for that. Um, what does that do in terms of the legality of that? Like, can the town, is there a, a eminent domain kind of a thing you can do with that if this is a, a, a stream that the town needs to there, maintain? There is you know? less we can do with a stream. Less we can do with a stream, okay. They are more protected. We okay, so, so it's, it's okay, it's, then the, rather than the town having more responsibility to maintain it, it's more the town has more responsibility to leave it the heck alone and not do anything. Okay. Right. To preserve it. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we just, again, and I, I'm not trying to minimize any of it. I wasn't here when this ditch committee was, you know, up and running. And, you know, you weren't here. I don't even know where these are. These, the, the chunks they're calling a ditch versus a brook, a stream, a... Uh, so if we can find anything that has a map or has these locations identified, okay. we'll talk about it again. But, you know, again, I, I'm, we can't do it all overnight. And, you know, we might have to actually look at it and maybe identify an area to pilot, see what we can do so that, again, we're not incurring all this cost immediately. 
Indeed. find out. And again, we talk to other towns, and you know, do they have a every five year clean out? Do they every two years? Do they clean them out every single year? Right. You know, what type of rotation or you know how much maintenance? You know, if you find, you know, and again, they they've identified other towns they feel like this is working well in right mm -hmm. so those might be towns we can talk to and say what is the maintenance plan for these is it yearly maintenance is it a three-year rotation you know we need to get some type of idea well and just for big picture wise let's say that i am living downstream of somebody who's not maintaining a chunk of the of the ditch it floods, it floods my house, I have property damage. What's the legality of that? Can that homeowner go after another homeowner for not maintaining something on their property that caused a thing? Or is that considered an act of God? Is there any, like, I'm assuming the town's not in any high liability for that because we don't have access, that's, that's private property, and we don't, you know, we don't have liability there. But, like, how does that work? Um, is that is the homeowner downstream of somebody just really out of, in, out of luck and has to continually have their basement flood and, and deal with their insurance company and stuff? I mean... Uh, the short answer is there's an area of law called repairing rights and it deals with, I think it deals with, the, it originated so that people couldn't dam a, bri a dam a stream and stop people from getting water downstream, mm -hmm. but there are some rights that people have versus upstream. I, I don't know specifically if, you know, flooding. But, but are these are rights. primarily farmland and stuff like that, right? These aren't really heavily residential areas where Most the of, yeah. where the true ditches are considered to be, right? I mean, there are ditches. I think there's a ditch that goes from 116 sort of behind the southern houses on Old Amherst. Um, yeah. But, I mean, you know, south of that is fields. So, right. <laughs> you know, um, I guess I would say that they border neighborhoods, but um, a lot of it is through farmland. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, where you live was farmland. Yep. Not too many years yeah, ago. Yeah, there was a handful of, of developments like that exactly that are that we used to be a farm plot. Um, the, the, the main reason I'm asking is that if we find out that the legality does give the homeowner downstream of the person upstream some kind of right to go after them over that, that would be a selling point for us in our ask for donations of the um, easements because we say, hey. Turns out, if you don't maintain this chunk of the of the thing, and your neighbor downstream gets their basement flooded, they, there's actually something they can do about that, and you could get you could end up being in trouble. I, I, I don't know if it's the case or not. I'm just saying, if we find out that was the case, that would be a. So I had a similar thought, and town council said the town should not provide legal advice. <laughs> don't, don't don't. That is a very <laughs> fair position to take, and probably a smart one. Yes. Because that almost sounds like blackmail. <laughs> no, I mean, but no, I mean it's it's. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I could see. I could see how that would be. Taken away. But no, I mean, it, it's. I don't know, I yeah, guess, no, I, it, it's no. I know context. I, how I would no, put it. I, um, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. It's. I mean, it's a matter of wording, and different you know, people take wording. Yes, and, and, very and, and differently. And, and all that other and money, and all that other stuff aside, I think that everyone in town can agree that we like Sunderland the way it is, and we don't want it to go back to being called Swamp Field because we like to not have swamps everywhere. Um, so I, 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 I certainly hope that people in town, especially those people around the ditches who have, who have them on their property, would be at least amenable to having a discussion about it. But we probably talked about it enough today. We can leave it at that. Um, yeah, I think Jeff's got quite a few action yeah, items yeah. about these. We, we, we will put that as an old business item for a future meeting. Um, so that's our last piece of new business. Uh, up first for old business would be operating budget review. Yeah, before we get to that, um, we had talked previously about maybe moving public comment up before old business and we have some members of the public so I didn't know if you wanted to do that. That's a very fair comment. I think yes. that would be... I probably should have asked you a while ago. Yeah. Like to talk about anything? I'm just here to, to yes, be here for the no, public meeting. Good evening. I'm Jessica Spitzman. Uh, I live at 123 North Main Street. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to talk about the town of Bayer Mercer recent decision to halt construction of the air outdoor pickleball courts due to neighborhood noise concerns. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the town of Sunderland has plans to review any site uh, design plans of Sunderland pickleball courts at Riverside Park, the way the neighbors 
uh, the library, any other pertinent uh, residents, and then also if a sound study will be conducted on these Miguel courts at the proposed location. Jeff, do you have any answer to those questions? Um, I mean, it, there. I think that we had raised the fence from six to eight feet. We had talked about doing a planting along the fence if noise was an issue, but that was the extent of. So the the fence that you would do the planting along is like the stockade fence, yeah, right? On Not the town side. yeah, on the town side. But that was if there was noise complaints. That was my it, it, It's not part of the initial design. Correct. Okay. Okay, so just um, the short answer is that we, we took into consideration, um, we didn't specifically do a noise study, um, but we are, we had, took into in, in consideration um, as a, we raised the, the, the height of the fence. And I think also, if I'm correct, remember correctly, wasn't there an option to put like those metal slats inside the, um, like we did it weaved into the, 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 the chain link fence and that's an additional noise barrier. There was something the guy had said about that. Site barrier. They said it didn't really reduce noise. It didn't much. reduce noise. Okay, I think I remember that. Yeah, that just stops people. The distraction of movement outside right, the fence. Right. Right. Okay. I don't believe yeah. that's. Um, but yeah, the 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 row of hedges was our primary thought there. Um, and would that help reduce noise? There's already a line of arbor lights against that wooden fence line, that a bus um, 121 North Main Street. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering how effective that would be. To be honest, I have no idea. I'm, you know, not an engineer or anything like that. Um, Is there an opportunity for the town center on to reach out to abutters of the space to review the site plans and solicit feedback? Was that part of something already? No. So. Uh, yeah, when it was an application for the CPA, we reached out. Um, most of the abutters didn't voice concerns. Um, they, there was a request to move it west, closer to the river, but because of the riverfront, 200 foot riverfront buffer, um, it couldn't accommodate that site. Yeah. So, you but know, we could the go. The riverwalk path being built, there's still no special accommodations that can make to that? It's. Um, it, the river walk is a per whatever the opposite of impervious is porous um whereas these would be paved and so yeah yeah that was where i wanted them. <laughs> yeah. i'm also curious there's a lot of events at the Sunderland public library particularly in um, uh, summer and fall at the outdoor story times they even had some um, i think duck world came out where they had some duck and geese running around in the area if you're hearing the constant ping 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 which I'm hearing uh, decibel levels is equivalent of free range traffic. How effective are those events going to be? You get more people in that space and that noise in that area, let alone the residential homes adjacent. Um, I mean, I, you know, that's part of a larger conversation about where we have stuff in, the, in this town and we already have baseball fields right there and the ping of a baseball off of a, of a, a metal bat is about the same as the ping of a, you know, so it, it's apples and oranges at that point. I um, agree with though. Th that's fair. No, that, that's fair. Um, but there's also ambient noise from people cheering and from umps and things like that. And so, you know, yes, it would be ideal if we could have more separation from the butters. It would be ideal if we have more separation from the, the library, from the town offices all around. Um, we looked at a lot of different options. The ones we wanted were unfortunately not feasible because, as I said, the, the, the river location um, were, were bound by what the law says we can do there. Um, and this was really the only location that worked for all of those things. And I'm well aware that it's not ideal in all respects, um, but it is what people in town voted on and so, went forward with. Do we don't know, or I'm sure they have to actually be constructed and up and before there's time of use and stuff on those courts. They're not going to... How, when they're going to be open? Or? Yeah. I mean, we can set regulations. Uh, if, depends on how is somebody can be responsible for locking, for opening. Yeah. Are we just going to say open, dawn to dusk? You know. Right. Um, who's going to enforce that? Yeah. You know, no, I'm just thinking of other ways to mitigate it by, you know, if there was time of use, you know, that 
They have noise reduction paddles, I hear. Um, time constraints, that could probably help, but an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So yep. knowing that the town of Amherst just got vocal from local residents regarding this location and the CPA funds, um, that $115,000 grant that was applied for, that was for at Riverside Park. We didn't have a specific, this is the design. Neighbors, what do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. um, so if you can look at soundproofing the area to help minimize, because it is very close. You've got a 30-foot wide volleyball field, my understanding from the design plans I got from Jeff this morning. It's right uh, next to the sidewalk. It's very close to the volleyball courts. Right oh, the I edge. thought there was a good chunk of space between the sidewalk and the... No, it's pretty... Pretty it's pretty close. close. It's okay. Right. And it was originally, right. um, you know, I heard pickleball court one, and now it's gone plural, so there's two. I think it's worth revisiting a town of Sumner on the sound study, just again, that ounce of uh, prevention, because it's going to become an issue. And then it's how you regulate the noise. Yeah. And particularly with the outdoor events, too, at the Sunderland Library. I, mean, I don't know if the uh, Board of Trustees was involved in this decision about the football courts, if they reviewed the design location with them. But I can remember um, during COVID, they had a lot of outdoor events for the community, and you had over 100 people that were lined up right where the proposed pickleball site is right now, Riverside Park, um, for farm dog, for farm um, dog, and, and a local tricks for canines, a frisbee throw, and this and that, and that's taken away. We've had town meetings in the past there, too, on those boosters. Right, so, there's been town events there where there were yeah. um, food trucks yep. set up out in that area that, you yeah. know. Well, and. and Unfortunately, we can't put the pickleball court closer to the water, but we can utilize the space that is in the zone we can't build on that is closer to the water. So we can shift things around and whatnot. So, you know, yes, there, there are things that were there that we're going to have to be able to find our space for, but we do have space. We just don't have space to put It's the, pavement, yeah, it's you the know. post location. I mean, yeah. exercise is very important. Pickleball, I think it's got 5 million, um, you know, adding followers in the United States and whatnot. It's the go-to sport, but is this the location for, or can it be modified, or even at the Sunderland Elementary School? Um, I don't know if space available there, but is that a better option and less impact on residential neighborhood? That's a fair point, yeah. Um, the, the sound study that you, I'm not from, I've never done a sound study. Is it, getting an idea of how loud the pickle, like, because we're not going to know how loud it is here until we built it, if we, right? So I, I'm just trying to understand, like, what your vision of a sound study would be. Measuring decibels and then also feet to property lines and the echoing. Okay, thank you. So I think largely that's sort of, I don't know that we have a plan for an official study, but more of a, we kind of have to wait and see until it's in to see what it is, what is the impact going to be. Um, and we do already have, you know, in our heads, some tentative plans for what to do, you know, like the, the hedgerow um, to mitigate that. Um, and if it become, if it turns out that it is a much larger problem than we, you know, are anticipating, um, I think it would, would be reasonable at that point because we would have the, the, the pickleball court in place to be able to do the study, to be able to, you know, talk about having a, a study, a firm come in to do some sort of study to, um, to measure both measure those those levels and also give suggestions of ways to mitigate that. Um, in terms of other locations, um, I really wish wish there was other locations. Uh, the school has its own list of, of things that are, are not great about it. Um, you know, not the least of which being that you don't really necessarily want to have random adults from the community on school grounds during school times. And we're back to like. When do people use it? If it's only at before school, after school, you know, and there are also abutters to the school properties and all that other stuff. So, you know, it would be great if we had an, a location that was both simultaneously close to everything and also in the middle of nowhere. Um, but unfortunately, we don't currently have that. Town Park. Well, that's the only place I can think of that is. That is a nice location. For you. That has absolutely nothing. Long walk for. Sanderson place, folks. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and again, you know, it, it, it's, it's part of a larger discussion that we have about this, the village center visioning and what we want to have be where in Sunderland. Um, you know, we're trying to make this a very senior friendly downtown. Um, and one of the large drivers for pickleball is seniors picking it up. And I think that's honestly a great thing because, again, we're talking about ex exercise for a, a, 
um, population segment that, that sometimes struggles to get exercise, and so we want to make it convenient and, you know, and close. Um, and to that point, I think Amherst is moving the pickleball courts from sort of a residential neighborhood to a park, right? At least that's what I had heard last time. They're trying to move it from Kiwanis Park. From Kiwanis Park to... Um, Mill Valley? Mill River. Mill River, Mill River. Yeah. yeah. Which is, Kiwanis is much more residential, more houses, um, smaller park, and Mill River has more space and further from houses. I don't know if, what they're, they decided, but yeah, so that's what I heard. Mill River Park has that same water issue, though. They have Depending a lot on whereabouts. Space. Yeah. They have the parking lot that has two tennis courts. Right. More basketball. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of where you can put another chunk of pavement and not be... I'm getting, you know, they've got... I'm sure that's been engineered. I'm just thinking out loud here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that it would have to be... They would have to move some stuff around. Yeah. Um, or extend the parking lot out if yeah. they could. Or repaint the, the tennis court, the pickleball court. Yeah. So you're going to look into if there's a way to do a sound study before construction? Yeah, and I'll see if, because I know that sound, it's not just an issue in Amherst. It's been an issue across the country. So I'll try and find other communities that have done something similar and so that we can um, get an idea. Yeah, because I just don't know how you do a sound study before you have the sound. Mm -hmm. Look at that Right, exactly, but, you know. In proximity to homes. Yeah. Is there a way to do kind of a news blast to uh, Butters on North Main Street regarding the design plans? Um, so they're made aware. We can send a letter and a copy of the plans to, um, is that a physical letter? I think that's the, the to the addresses. We could certainly, um, 200 yeah. feet, 300 feet of the what, like what's a reasonable? What do you get for Sanderson? Uh, well, that's prescribed by law. I think it's yeah. 300 feet. So, okay. I, I, I would be perfectly fine with the town contacting the people within 300 feet. That's you know, okay, totally reasonable. All right, thank you. Of course, thank you for bringing it to our attention. We always like to have input from the public, um, and you know, sometimes we don't get things right, and we want to hear that too. So that's a, that's a good thing to also. Um, anything else you wanted to bring up while you were here? No, that's it. Wonderful. Jess, did you have anything you wanted to bring up while we're here, or are you just here to listen? Just listening. All right. All right. Sounds good. Um, in that case, now we're going to talk about the budget. Operating budget review, Jeff. Yeah. So, I think last week we were somewhere in the $350,000, gap range. Um, and then we had the budget hearing with the elementary school um, and after that discussion I think they found uh, $60,000 in savings in their budget um, so this has been reduced by that amount I also included 30% of free cash um, which is $141,500 so between those two things, um, the gap that we are looking or that we have to reduce is about 240000 Okay. Um, so there are a couple of larger chunks that we can... There, there are two larger chunks that, that are possibilities. Um, currently in the budget, we have a new full-time police officer. Um, if we did not hire a new full-time police officer this year, we would likely save about $37,000. That's uh, it on one full-time salary? Because... Oh, because of the part-time. Part yeah. Yep, got yeah. it. Got it. I was just trying to think. I'm like, yeah, God, no. a police officer has to make more than that. Right, but you still have to fill the shifts with part-times or per diems. Got it. I understand now. Um, well, I feel like that, that not doing that this year is reasonable because we did just add a full-time police officer position, what, two years ago, something like that? Yeah, I mean, you were here when they did it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so sorry. it feels like we could certainly say no to that one this year without it being a super huge issue. So you said that's 37,000? Yep. All right. And then the next, the other big thing that we can look at is insurance. Um, health insurance went up 8%. Um, and we can change benefits. Um, but those are sort of the two big areas that, that I identified as. So do we have big cuts. anybody we've asked to come back with uh, a better EMS. budget? So we're still waiting on South County EMS to present us. So this, just to clarify, this includes the 33% increase that the EMS sent us? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we've asked EMS to come back with a better budget no one else? They were really the only ones that were asking for anything more than just level services costing more. Well, you know, no, we had the library asking for extended hours. I don't think we included uh, that. So, yeah, so, sorry, included in this is um, not the extended hours and not the 8% um, COLA that the library requested, just the um, what the personnel committee had been recommending, which was 3%. Yeah. Okay, so there's nothing to trim on the library. Okay, no. so that's all right, and that's that's fine. I'm just trying to understand yep. what's what's in here. So, one thing that I had brought up with you, Jeff, that I think is worth mentioning is that we have a fairly sizable chunk of money in the general stabilization fund that we've been putting money into for the last chunk of years have not been taking money out of including if I remember correctly $200,000 last year we put into that fund um, where if we end up having this be a abnormally large year of increases because of the school transportation thing which is not going to happen every year and because of the insurance going up 8% which God, I hope doesn't happen <laughs> very often. Um, that I, I could see my way to authorize, authorizing some money coming out of the general stabilization fund to make up not necessarily two hundred and forty thousand dollars of of shortfall, but some of that. Um, knowing that that means that we have to still come up with that money next year and going forward, but that next year may not be a year where we're seeing a thirty three percent and eight percent and this percent and that percent all at the same time. Um, doesn't necessarily make me the happiest, but just saying that that yeah, is necessarily yeah, that is an option on our, our plate. Um, yeah, and you know, I get I get what you're saying there too. But the other thing that starts concerning me with with that situation is for the last couple of years we've been able to cover a lot of these things that just kind of come up spur of the moment with ARPA money. Yep. I if know. we don't have you know, what do we do next? You know, once ARPA's gone, what do we do next time a furnace goes? And what do we do next time, you know, and again, I don't know that there's any other oil tanks in the ground anywhere in town, on town property. I, I, hopefully there aren't. But, you know what I mean? When yep. that type of situation comes up, we don't have ARPA to say, oh, we can take care of this. You know, so I'm kind of hesitant to. Mm -hmm. No, and, yeah, I, hey, and again, I'm not happy with it either. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, it's not yeah, my first I'm, choice. It's not my third choice. Um, I, I, I'm just kind of worried about that. I don't think this is going to make you feel any better. But, <laughs> I'm sure it's not. <laughs> uh, we we couldn't spend stabilization funds without town meeting approval anyway. Right, yeah, but at no, least we have to have it a would, special town meeting to appropriate well, funds. Right, but at least yeah. there's the money yeah. sitting there somewhere yeah. to take care well, of this if, if we need to. And to be clear, we have something like 580 or something like that. 600. 600 ish right now, and we're talking about maybe taking 100 out of this or something along those lines. So we're not bankrupting the town by any means. Right, no, and I know. Put in I just, more than that last year into the fund. So, you know, yeah. over a two year period we are still increasing the fund by a hundred thousand dollars yeah you know again not my favorite choice but i also don't necessarily want to start going to tell every department in town and start asking for cuts across the board when last year we had enough money in, in free cash to be able to put money into stabilization you know 
I, you know, we're already yeah, I know. We're already I, losing a teacher, right, Jess? Yeah. We're already losing a teacher. We're already, you know, not being able to say yes to any of the things that people are wanting to ask, are asking us. And if we're going to start having to cut things, you know, what 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 good is money sitting in a stabilization fund if we're having to make cuts that affect people in town? Like that's sort of the point of having that money is to. Yeah. You know, oh no, I I, <laughs> I know. I'm just I'm really concerned with not having that. Oh, I know. That ARPA money, like well, we've had, to really just pick away at. And, also, and, and I think we've done a lot of good with oh, that yeah. ARPA money. And also, not even just the money end of things, like where's that money come from, but just the ease in which we're able to. Oh, a problem comes in, we can approve that solution right away, and bam, it's fixed. It's a it's a lovely thing that's not normal in politics. So. Yeah. Um. All right. Sorry, that was sort of a little bit of a tangent there, but I wanted to kind of bring that up as a. Yeah. As a, you know. Uh, a parachute, basically. Um, all right, so if we, if we I, I think that, Crystal, I'm assuming you can agree that we can tell the, the chief that he's not getting a new officer this year. I, 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 let me put it this way. I would be real hard-pressed to go to other people asking them to, to cut things if we're still giving <laughs> the police department a new officer. Um, right. I think that, that that's definitely not level services. Um, we, can, we can eliminate that. Um, yeah. So, what do you have? You had said you'd mentioned the health insurance. Yeah. So. What do you have for there? So health insurance. Um. It de depends on the benefit. So the easiest thing, um, currently, there is no deductible, um, and going from no deductible to. Two hundred and fifty dollars, or seven hundred, two hundred and fifty an individual, seven hundred and fifty a family max, would save five and a half percent, which is about thirty-three thousand. Um, there are other things that we can do that have smaller impacts. Um, you know, the ER copays, um, inpatient admittance, same-day surgery copays. Um, prescription uh, copay changes. Um, so th there is, if we want to look at maybe changing benefits, um, that's something that we could do to save money. I think that one of the things the personnel committee has been talking about is um, looking into the Paid Family Medical Leave Act. So maybe we want to have a larger conversation not now because we have to tell Maya <laughs> in 12 days what we want to do about insurance. Um, but, you know, a larger discussion around benefits in general and, you know, are, are employees interested in paid family medical leave because that's a payroll deduction as well as the town contribution. So I guess just uh, revisiting this in, in light of this increase and, and um, you know, I think we have to do something budgetarily, but I think, you know, we may want to look at insurance overall again. Yeah. I mean, I, I hate to touch the insurance, especially because we just last year added a went up with two and a half percent or something like that amount, or five percent on our side. Um, and also, an eight percent increase means that the the employees percent they're paying is going up by eight percent also. So us turning around and being like, okay, well, we're gonna shove part of our increase on you also doesn't sit super well with me. I'm not saying it's off the table because, you know, we have the budget about the budget, but just I just don't love, I don't love that. Well, I, I will say that if we decrease insurance, that their insurance decreases too, right? With that, is, that is true. So that they would be paying, they'd be paying deductible, but they would also have their insurance be going down by the same 5.5%. Oh, that, that, okay, so that, that, that actually does make me feel so, a little better. So I love it, but that does make me feel a little bit better. Yeah, about I don't situation. love it either. But, um, so I guess we need to figure out some some math on it. That If you went to a $250 deductible for a single person, $750 deductible for a family, are they saving that much per year? Probably not. And their insurance. Yeah. Also, 
Or the, is that the only It's just step? a curiosity yeah. thing. You know what I mean? I guess. Because that kind of. Yeah. So another, another I question I guess I'd like ask it, is, is, that, is, is that the only option or could we do 100 and 300 or something like that? Something that, that, that's sort of meeting in the middle, still a little bit of a, a savings for the town, but not quite as much of a hit. Um, and have that be in conjunction with some other cuts that we make across the board so we're not taking a huge chunk out of the insurance. We're taking a little chunk out of the insurance and maybe a little chunk here and a little chunk there and you know, work our way up to the 240 we're missing. Yeah, yeah, I can ask. So yeah, if you don't mind asking what those numbers are, um, and if it's like 250, 750 is a 5% savings and 100, 300 is only a half a percent or something like that, okay, well, that's not worth it. You know, but if it scales in a, in a way that's, that, that makes sense to us, we might want to consider doing Right, but I think we a, have to fig get a, a number on what's, what's the actual savings on an individual plan. Yep. If they're out of pocket, you know, yeah. How much less are they going to be paying? Yeah. Yeah, so we can multiply that out by 12 and see over the course of a year. Yeah, because if, if it's an extra $750 for a family over the year for the deductible, but they're saving 400 in their out-of-pocket cost and town saving $400 in their out-of-pocket cost, that makes me feel a lot better than if it's we're saving 50 they're saving 50 and it's costing them 750 You know, that definitely makes me feel better. Um, so, yeah, if you can get some numbers on what the different – whether we can scale that and, and play around with that a little bit. Um, and also, as Crystal was asking for a breakdown of, you know, what what the increase to town and to the employee would be for a single and a family plan um, under that, if that's something that the insurance can come up with. Okay. I will do that. Do you want me to invite, because um, we do have to make a decision next week, <laughs> invite the Meyer up to the meeting in case you have questions or... Uh, that probably makes sense, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if we can notify, you know, if the Maya rep's going to be here, if we can, again, I'm not trying to, but chances are there's going to be questions, right? If we can make sure anyone who's currently on town insurance is notified in case there is you know, they have questions. I think that's fair, yeah. But if we could just get out again for for helping to actually get through an agenda, mm -hmm. if we could, you know, like move the Maya rep to the last so that, you know, people f dealing with the other business and stuff would have the opportunity to yeah, yeah. either turn sense. off their television or whatever. We could say that, that that part's starting at 7 or whatever it is. It would right, to just time. so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and let us know as soon as possible whether the my rep can come or not, because um, then we can, if not, we can discuss through you what we want to do about that. Okay. Um... Sorry, I think we had talked just because it's related. Yep. Um, Dan's coming back next Monday, so we talked about moving the meeting to next Tuesday. So while we're talking about inviting them, yeah, um, are we? Do we still want to move the meeting next week to Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. I just want to. Just mean, unless you have a. a, a I, so my problem is I just don't know on Monday whether I can be here or not. Oh, yeah, so yeah, Tuesday works better for you, then that's fine with me, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, Tuesday's fine. And Dan will definitely be back for Tuesday. Much higher chance that he'll be back on Tuesday than Monday. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, so. So, okay, tu yeah, tu Tuesday it is, um, and please send out a, a reminder of that via email so I can okay. put it in my calendar and all that fun stuff. Um, and those are the only real two places that you're seeing any kind of... That we can do significant, I mean, there's... You know, a number, a number of departments asked for legitimate increases in expenses, um, which we can cut. Um, the personnel committee is recommending a three percent cola, um, and in lieu of a longevity payment, a one-time two percent wage adjustment for employees with 10 or more years of service. So those are the people who are no longer in a step. Mm -hmm. so, all right, so the people who can get a step increase are getting a 
Coca-Cola plus, plus the, their staff. Yeah. So they're seeing more in their paychecks. Five percent of that, yeah. So because the people with 10 years or more, the people have been here 20 years, you know, have seen nothing for 10 years other than a cola, kind of looking to do a one-time 2% wage adjustment to try to get them a little closer mm -hmm. to... And how does that factor into this? That Would that be something that we're going to end up seeing above this? So I, my point was going to be that no, uh, that even if we cut that, <laughs> it's not going to make much of a difference. Okay. You know, I think it was, well, it was a difference of like $3,500. Yeah, I think if we went from 3% to 2%, it would be a couple thousand at Okay. Most. Yeah, so. which is... No, I, I just I just meant in terms of like where are we sitting in terms of right now on this? Is yeah, that but I just want to, you know uh, that obviously uh, wages is a big expense. So I wanted yeah. did look at I did look at wages, but um, like I said, it's going to be you know a thousand dollars here, five hundred dollars there. Um, I guess if if you all want to give me you know direction as far so, as so I think some of the things. And again, these are only things coming off the top of my head. I believe a lot of departments significantly increase their fuel costs because gasoline is up and down and kind of not stable. Can we, is there a way for you to pull out, you know, like on a keyword or something in your budget, all the fuel costs and see if we can kind of get them a little more in line. So again, do we want to do 10% increase on that fuel on everyone's fuel line versus some people having a 5% increase in their fuel line and some people having a 25% increase on their fuel line? Yeah, I remember a couple on there that went up by 30 something percent. Right. That went, so and again, I know we can't predict it, but if we could Maybe see what evening out those fuel costs. And then the same thing with the utility costs. You know, again, these might not be huge things. But if, you know, some, peop some departments are increasing their utilities by 10% and another department's increasing it by 30%, maybe we can get something a little... A little more consistent, you know, for increase of utilities, increase of fuel. Yeah. So, does that make sense? I know that they talked about fuel. Um, I would probably have to look at each budget but, individually. Well, but I, what I was, I think that a lot of them include fuel in their expense, their building expense, heating fuel and building oh, expense. So, like. Okay. Police have a fuel expense. I think highway has a. F I think highway has a fuel expense, um, but yeah. So I mean, I can. But I think in general, we can do that for expenses as well. It's you know I don't think that. I, I think that at least most things have gone up pretty close to the same amount. So yeah. proportionally. So we can we can certainly look at that, and I think that there are also you know some areas like I I don't know that the town administrator expense has been spent. We could save a few thousand dollars there. I think professional development. We could also you know there's some things in the the select board accounts that we can. Um, I but, mean, but again, we're not talking tens of thousands. Correct. So it's going to be a lot of little. Correct. I mean, looking through this, most people are sitting around three, three to four percent increase, which is pretty reasonable, given what's going on. You know, that's about around where inflation and stuff is. You know, maybe a little low, but there are a couple outliers here. So one of the things we can do is start looking at those outliers and seeing if there's some, you know, places. I mean, starting from the bottom up, we got uh, health and sanitation has an eleven percent increase. Looks like there's a thirty-four percent increase on the landfill monitoring. You know, is that something that we are stuck on? Is that something that they that we have a contract that we're a bit or something like that? You know, okay. 
moving on from there. <laughs> yeah, they, they wanted to raise it last year, and I was like, you can't double our <laughs> contract in, in mid-season. So, yeah. It's, yeah. So that's a chunk of money. Um, but we don't have a lot of choice there. I mean, not a huge dollar amount. I'm looking at percentages, but not a huge dollar amount. Um, obviously, the school is a huge one, but that's a whole thing. Um, and they've already made cuts, so I'm not looking to go ask them to make any more cuts yet. Um, fire so is 19%? Maybe we're... I was, they had equipment they needed to replace this year. Yeah. It's actually out of date, and they can't go to fire academy. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Um, where would you, like... All right. Aside from being balanced, <laughs> how close would you like to be next week? Um, <laughs> closer? <laughs> I guess um, closer. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can, I can do a first pass with the no new officer, um, not touching insurance, and see where we're at, and send it around, and um, if there's, you know... Maybe that's enough to get us close to the, that you're comfortable using stabilization or you want to do some stabilization, some additional free cash or something like that. Yeah. Um, and what's our total free cash amount right now? I thought it was 490. Four, and we're using 140 or something like that? Yeah. 140. So I mean, that's another option is that we could go heavier on the free cash, which is sort of like half here, half there with the, the stabilization money. I mean, yep. it's all a... You know, it's all the town's mo leftover money, basically. Um, leftover money. <laughs> <laughs> if there's such a thing. So, I mean, I, I guess if we were to go from 140 on the free cash to 200 on the free cash, plus 100 in, in stabilization, there's another 160. Now we're within 80,000 full-time police officer. Now we're within 40,000. 40,000 is much more, much more likely we can find 40,000 out of here and there's. Um, or we end up having to go 20 more on the free cash and 20 more on the stipulation or something like that, but, you know. Right, yeah, and then we need off. to... South County. We need to find out from South County. Because, yeah. cause, yeah, if, if they can come down from 33% increase to 10? <laughs> 5? Um, that would be a, a much bigger thing. And also, another question I have is, is in terms of um, receipts and whatnot, are we fairly confident that we've captured our... I, our income next year properly. Um, I know that we did not fully assess the value coming in from um, North Maine. I was, but the assessors have told me that everything is up to date. That we should expect about forty thousand in new growth this year. So that is okay. in here. That's in there. Okay. Um, local receipts have not been updated, um, but I don't anticipate them being dramatically different. Okay. Um, now, that, is that forty thousand in new growth? For just forty thousand new growth, and they're not adjusting the, the what what we think we're going to get from the the senior thing, or is that forty thousand include? They said that they included it last year. They did. Okay. All right. So full amount. I, I confirm that both North One Sixty Flats and Zangerson Place, where you're not expecting any new growth from you. Gotcha. Okay. That was yeah. I just want to make sure we're okay. Right, so so forty thousand new growth. Yeah, because you know, who doesn't have an extra five hundred thousand dollars when the town's new growth is forty thousand dollars? Yeah. I must be. Can you show me what page South County EMS is on on this? Um, it's under it's by police and fire under protection. Uh, it's under fire department. Oh, it's under fire department. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, they were talking about EMS. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah sorry, I, I, I'm seeing that. So, so it looks like they already brought that down to 25.1%. Is that, is that a, yeah. so, okay, so that's better ish? Okay. I was looking for them in a yellow, you know, yeah, yeah. it's their own heading. Well, also that, that also explains why the 
the fire department's increase was so big is because it's not really the fire department's increase. It's the, in fact, the fire department looks like the fire department in general is pretty stable. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 3,000 of that's the fire department, 70,000 of that's EMS. Um, okay. So I think I have my homework. I'm going to be inviting the Maya rep. He's got a lot of homework between <laughs> ditches and year. all this. <sighs> um, and we're going to make a decision on insurance. And I will come back with um, closer to, if not a balanced budget. Okay. Sounds good. And some, just some numbers. Yeah, for insurance. Cause yeah. So yeah, if we and again, I know it kind of. If we keep it exactly the same as it is now, versus if we drop it, you know, what are we really looking at here at the end of the day? Yeah. And, and sorry to give you one more piece of homework, but if you could get one more thing for me, and that would be um, a breakdown of the last maybe five-ish years of free cash stabilization fund, like numbers coming into, t into town meeting for the last couple of years, just to have a general idea of what our total sort of available money has been over the last couple of years, whether it's gone up, gone down, that kind of thing. Um, I know that you know free, ca free cash was high last year. We put some money in stipulation, that kind of thing, just to get a general idea of what the trend looks like so we know whether if we do end up putting 200 and something thousand dollars between free cash and stipulation, what does that look like for the overall trend right, of our savings over long term? Maybe it's already on there. Maybe I'm just not looking at that. So I would say that um, I'll answer it quickly, and then I'll get you the hard numbers. But we, I don't think we've put money in general stabilization except for last year and the last five right, years. Isn't it this okay. line right here? Um, and free cash has averaged about four to five hundred thousand. This is what we've used in free cash, but no, I, I wanted to. I'm just looking for like the, yep, I'll the get end you the of the hard, year. We had four hundred in free cash. We had the four hundred oh, in stabilization. Oh, yeah. Next year we had. 250 in free cash, we had 400 in civilization. Next year we had 600 in free cash, we had 400 in civilization. Okay. This last year we had whatever in 550 in free civilization. Just so that we can, again, I, I want to see what the, the general flow is because if we're looking at being, going from already kind of low on the last five year trend to taking a huge nosedive, that's different than if we've been kind of working our way up and we take a little bit of a dip and then we're still within, you know, what I'm getting, what I'm getting at is if we spend that money out of those two funds, are we still going to be within the margin of error of where we should be right now, or are we going to be really putting ourselves in, in bad shape? Yep. Um, so if you can get that information, I promise that's the last thing I will ask you to get information about tonight. And I'll probably change my mind in five minutes, but we'll go with that. All right. Um, I think that's enough budget talk for tonight. You have your homework. We appreciate that. Um, next week we will talk. Hopefully at that point we will come out with a plan because we have very little time left to do so. All right, up next, ARPA requests South uh, yeah, South Elementary School electrical repairs and fuel removal. Uh, sorry, just fuel removal. We, you approved electrical repairs last sorry. week. Yes, so uh, you, we had asked questions about the fuel and you had said that you were gonna ask them. Yes, so the fuel is being recycled. Um, there was 900 more gallons than they expected. Um, and what they said is that what, what the contractor told them is that it's the stuff that sits on the bottom and is nearly unusable anyway, so would need to be recycled um, to be used. Okay, that actually makes a lot more sense because yeah, no, we, we have to have our sludge cleaned out around then also. called it bottom sludge. Yeah. Um, just run it empty, then you never get its lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that has its own problems. <laughs> Ask me in my cans of uh, diesel out behind my house why. Um, so that makes a lot more sense. Um, I still don't love the idea of paying to get rid of fuel, fuel we paid for, but if we're talking about the sludge at the bottom of the tank, that makes a lot more sense. 900 gallons of sludge at the bottom of the tank is a yeah, lot. That's a lot of sludge. Um, and, and just to confirm, 
either way, damage done. It's already it's happened, already right? done. Like we might be not super happy about it, but it's what it is, and you know, moving on. I mean, I, I think it's fair to to maybe just have a discussion if we have another product like this come up beforehand about what we're going to do about that, and you know, maybe make it clear that we would like to have some input if a if that kind of situation arose again of what we want the town wanted to do it, and maybe the solution is the same thing, which is we have no choice but to do it. Cool, but maybe the town would like to have a, a say on that next time around. Um, but anyways, I think we need to ask the oil company how do we avoid having 900 gallons of sludge in the future. That's also, they, yeah. you know what I mean because they're putting <laughs> yeah. in brand new oil tanks. Yeah. Um. And in terms of our request, you, you needed us to approve how much money for eighteen hundred dollars. Eighteen hundred dollars. Okay. I make a motion we approve eighteen hundred dollars from ARPA money for fuel removal or to pay the bill for fuel removal, right? Yeah. It's already done. It's already a done deal. Yeah. 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 All right. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Two nothing deaf. Thank you. All right. Select board updates. Amazingly, I have nothing this week. So I have nothing. They have postponed South County EMS from this week to next week. So I'm going to have nothing next week to update on South County EMS either. Alrighty. So that's it for select board updates. Unless Dan is going to pop on in five seconds. Um, next up is town administrator updates. Jeff. I only have one, which is um, if anybody is planning on submitting a Warren article, those are due on Friday. So next week also, um, depending on how busy our agenda is, we'll probably have a first look at the warrant. Okay, great. All right. That is everything. Any final public comment from the assembled masses? No? Wonderful. All right. Oh, wait. Uh, I think we have one. Oh, sorry, Peter. Do you want a couple of suggestions on the budget? Sure, um, please. One would be that this is, you get sort of put in 30% of free cash. And I believe the thinking is that's the number we've sort of agreed to over the years that goes into free cash, goes into the budget from free cash to help balance the budget. But this is the first year when there is, I don't believe there is any plan to also put a chunk of money from free cash into capital stuff. Yes. So that it might be worth, you know, part of the discussion about the use of free cash or that it, it, it's used to balance the budget is now it's, I mean, what you have right now is using 30% of it and, you know, some percent is going to be on probably a couple, two or three other articles that will need some free cash, but you're still probably using you know, somewhat less than 50% of it, mm -hmm. okay, and, you know, I think that needs to be maybe a discussion as to, well, in the era where we're not having to use it for capital, for, you know, routine capital projects, because people pass the capital override, is the number 30% really, you know, should be looked at, and it might be like 50% is a better number. You know, like totally justifiable rather than yep. sort of, we need it this year. No, I think it's a very good point because, yeah, we have every year for the last bunch of years be putting money into the capital because well, we didn't I have... Right, and it's been like yeah. another 30 or something yeah. like 30 or... So, I mean, you can... You can't you can, go into capital and that's not happening now. Yeah, so. yep. and you can even look at it as if we had gone for a general override last year rather than a capital override, this year we'd be asking for free cash money for capitals, but we'd have more money in the operating budget, so... Right. You know, six to one, half dozen other. So I, I like that. A lot. Right. The yeah. second point is that uh, um, I have no idea in this year what amount is being spent, taken out of the reserve fund, or will be, because often it's done towards the end of the year. But that account has been bumped up to fifty thousand from a much smaller number, and in this year's budget, it's just still the same fifty thousand. And I will hope at least that gets a little thought as to whether. You know, there may have been a, 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 a situation where, with the inflation that took place over the last couple of years, the places like the fire department, uh, highway department on some accounts, you know, were severely underfunded and had to turn to the uh, reserve fund and so on. Um, my hope would be that, you know, at this point they are submitting budgets that are closer to what's going to be needed. There's less uncertainty with the supply chain stuff. Mm -hmm. so on that was before with inflation is you know moderated so on so that 50,000 still needed yeah is that the OPEB trust fund you're talking about or is that no, the reserve fund, no. reserve fund oh 
that requires that? the Where's that there? Uh, 230. Line 230. I'm sorry, Tim. Line 230. Oh, I'm, I'm on the wrong page entirely. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah, we were putting 17 in, in the last couple of years. We put in a bunch. It looks like... And we're budgeted for 50 this year also, right? Right. And, and I would just... Yeah. No, I, I, would, I would raise the question as to, number one, what's it look like for the current year? Because that's always your first thing. Is, you know, well, what are we doing yeah. this year so far? Because this year is three quarters over. Yep. Right. You know, and it looks like things are coming... I mean, I don't know if Jeff is hearing things about current year budgets being in trouble because that's what your you know, request for money from the reserve fund comes from. is suddenly, you know, the highway is saying, hey, you know, we're going to be way short on this account. Well, so on. well, if you're not hearing that, so the only the only pushback I would push on that is just that that's sort of one of the things that me and Crystal were talking about being worried about is we have ARPA funds right now, which has largely yes, made that not necessary. Say, <laughs> the reserve fund can be used for that, but it's you know, you know, go overboard with that way, and it just made. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, point, pointing that out. That yeah. I don't know if yeah. there's really a need for that amount or not. Third, I would think that. Uh, uh, maybe you're not thinking that there's a, you know, huge bump in, in local receipts, but if there was a bump of 20 grand or something like that, it's, you know, you should be getting that, that number, at this point in the budget process, should be getting settled on, mm -hmm. okay, and, um, uh, and I think, I, I, it didn't sound like, I thought for a moment that there was something you were talking about where somebody like the fire department needed a bunch of new equipment to just this year in order to satisfy something. If that was something that was going to be a one-time event, as opposed to being an annual kind of thing, okay, then that's the kind of thing that probably ought to be pulled out and paid for in a separate article using free cash, okay, because it's not going to be you know, in this year and then out next year and sort of messing up the annual yeah. budget. So I think what he... But I don't know if it's enough that... It may not be enough that that makes... No, so I think what he's do, he's doing is like, th there's a life expectancy of this. Right. So I think he has now adjusted the budget so that like every year they buy two complete sets of... Yeah, that always used to be the process. Yeah. You, yeah. Buy, you buy some each year. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I just think that this year... It couldn't get put off or something, you know. And it, I, whether he, I can't remember if last year he, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. Were there more people going? Yeah. yeah, there were. There was some something, but yeah, he does have it on a cycle so that. And then Jeff, I would think that I don't know if you had last year a discussion with the uh, assessors about whether it's time to reclaim a bit of the overlay surplus or not, but that's always one that. That's worth doing because you may find another ten or twenty thousand there. Yeah. So we did a couple of years ago, and they didn't seem inclined <laughs> to, to want to do it. But well, I would go back and you know ask a little more forcefully. Yeah. You know, I mean, it depends on how much where we stand in the way of, of the back taxes in the various years as to what you're legally allowed to do. But if you are allowed, then there's no reason not to claim some. Yep. Just a few. No, I, I, I. It's wonderful I, I, I to have a fresh set of eyes yeah. on this. Let me tell you, because we look. If we have five more people like you come in here and tell us five more things, we'd be all set. And, um, I, think, and I think that the EMS thing is, South County EMS thing is, that's a chunk of money they're asking for a bunch of different stuff, and you know, part of the response can be. Okay, look, we can do some of this year, but there's no way we can do anywhere close to all of this. And you've got to figure out your priorities. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and so on. And rather than feeling like you've got to justify a cut from their increase, they need to justify an increase from previous year that's of something that Correct. the towns can handle. Yeah. Yeah. No, and they've got, they got to say, okay, guess we're not asking for this and this and this this year because you guys just going to pay it. What we basically said to them is, great, this is like a 10-year plan. Why are you trying to do it in one year? <laughs> you know, come back to us with the first year of your 10-year plan and we'll talk. Yeah. Um, no, so I, I, think I think you could, I think you could knock a chunk off of that without feeling like you're being either disrespectful or imprudent 
or something like that, yeah. but just saying, well, this, you know, this is the way things work in towns. You, you know, you need a bunch of stuff. You try and get a little one year, and then a little more the next year, and you eventually get to where you want to get to. All right, five-year plans are great. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that was the conver the follow up conversation that I had with the chief is, you know, hey, we're gonna have to phase this in, and he said, where I come from, you don't get what you don't ask for. So this is what I this is what I asked yeah. for, and I said, all right, so you know, that that's my failing for not setting you up for success when you came in here, yeah. um, and we will work on that. Yeah, and, and I would be one place I'd be hesitant would be. Uh, with health insurance, and it's partly because it's late in the game here, and you have uh, you went through the whole process last year, and you got a good start, a good early start on it, okay? And a good early start and stuff like this is important, and something where you're just saying, okay, we got to decide in, in two weeks, and so we're we'll getting all in here one week, and you know, it's just it's fast and it's. You know, it was, I don't know. I would just think twice before you. Yeah, yeah. So we, I, I mean, we need to see some numbers yeah, and get the numbers first, and then decide. Okay, do we really want to push this, or do we want to right. figure well, out some other way to make the budget work, and then figure next year we'll, you know, but, you know, let them know, let people know this is under consideration. But maybe next year we don't actually put it into effect for another year. I'm just saying this is a possibility. I'm not saying that you won't end up being stuck having to do something. Right. But, it may be nice to be able to have a year nothing changed. No, and given the choice between any of your suggestions and making changes to the health care plan, I would go with your suggestions in a heartbeat over <laughs> changing that. You know, as we both said multiple times, we don't like that idea. It's just that that's sort of where we were. Um, just so that Jeff is prepared for next week with a budget because we're coming down to the wire. Um, if we were to talk about um, the reserve fund going down from 50000 what number, Crystal, would you be happier? 25 Well, I think we'd have to see how much came out of it this year. Nothing. Nothing. The reserve fund? Yeah. yeah. Because we largely have used... Usually what happened in the past, and right. this is way in the past, is first of all, the reserve fund was, oh, I'm run, sorry, by, reserve. I'm sorry. was run by the Finance Committee, mm -hmm. um, and... Most of the requests would come in towards the end of the year because it would be like, okay, right. we got to June and suddenly we're, you know, a thousand dollars short or something like right. that, and so on. So I wouldn't expect there to be if there's stuff already at this point in the year. I'd be really surprised. Right. And furthermore, you've been pulling stuff out of ARPA that might have been covered by the reserve fund in the past. So right. I'd be really surprised if anything close to 50k got used this year. Yeah. If you can give us some historical numbers, though. Well, our shark would be for that. It was like 17. So it was always used in the past because the fire department chronically under-requested wages. So every year until, I think it was two years ago when we finally bumped it up, I said, no, ask for what you need and we'll use the reserve fund for what it's meant for. Um, we used at least $10,000 in firefighter wages. Um, but we're... To the best of our ability, confident that what the numbers the fire department is giving us are going to be better this year in line with the last couple of years. Yes. So okay, and what happens to the the um, reserve fund money at the end of the year? Does that become free cash? Yes. Okay. Cash so there isn't there isn't just a, a pile of money out there that's been accumulating. We're talking about okay. So in effect, that's going to become free cash at the end of the year either way. You know. And I yeah. think, you know, to Peter's point, that's why we bumped it up to 50000 is we didn't know, you know, fuel prices were going crazy, costs were, and they've stayed Utilities stabilized. were going crazy. Yeah, and we just yeah. didn't know, and we, I think we had to cut expenses from what was requested, and we said, we're going to bump up the reserve fund, so if we're wrong, <laughs> and your fuel is twice as much, then we will use the reserve fund as a safety net. So you always you always do have the possibility of calling a special town meeting. Yeah. So oh, we, yeah. Haven't, we haven't done it for a while, but it used to be very standard. Yeah. So I'm what I'm thinking in my head right now is if we add together how much money out of free cash that we've taken for the last chunk of years and put into both the budget and into the capital projects and added those together and averaged them. And that was the number we took out of free cash and put into the budget. That sounds like a fairly reasonable way of going about that. 
Yeah, I think I think when you have the numbers in front of you next week, it's going to be a lot easier to talk about yeah. where you're yeah. coming from. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like the piece I was missing, which I'm really glad you brought up, was the, the whole not moving money into capital anymore, not having to worry about that. Because this year, the capital, and we're going to be meeting again tomorrow, is it? Or is it next week? We're, we have not set it up yet. We have not set it up. We've been set it up to Um Currently, where we are in capital projects, we're within the money we have. We're able to, to, to meet the needs of the town without having to come to the town and ask for money for capital, which was the whole goal of the, the table division override in the first place. And I'm glad we did it because, man, we'd be in a much worse position today if we didn't ha had to do that because this budget would also <laughs> include $250,000 that we were going to have to transfer into, into capital. Um, I would feel better about using more free cash and leaving stabilization alone. I was talking about stabilization pretty much because I, I didn't want to completely bankrupt us in free cash, but I wasn't thinking, oh yeah, we put usually put 20, 30 percent in to um, to yeah. capital, and we're not. If we take that, if we recapture that capital free cash, we're we're pretty close. You know that plus the police officer plus a little bit more magic. I think we can say that we don't have to touch the um, health insurance if that's the case. Um, in fact. I don't know how you feel this, Crystal, but I would be comfortable saying we're going to just take the, the health insurance off the table, not worry about having a rep come next week, not worry about all that stuff, because at the end of the day, if it's a couple extra thousand dollars, but it means people and the, the employees of our town having to pay more out of pocket for something, I'd rather go deeper in the free cash on that one personally. Um, so I'm still going to do the calculation because I'm curious if a 5% reduction and a 257.50 deductible, they'd actually be saving money. No, and then that's totally fair. Um, because yep. if they would, then I think that we would want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd be surprised so if they were. Yes, I'm going to do the calculation <laughs> anyway. I, I get the feeling that the insurance company would be losing money in that scenario, and they try to very hard not to do that. Um, but yeah, no, if you come back, and it's, even if it's it's a, it's enough of a savings for the town, and it's almost a wash for the, the employees, that would be something, you know, obviously we talk about. But yeah, because you're really looking at... So what, 200, oh, if you do 240, that's 200 a month, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Two, 20, 20, yeah. 20, thank you. Yeah, you're looking at $20 a month. 60 for a, for a right? family, yeah. yeah. So if they're going to save $20 a month, by having a two hundred and fifty dollar deductible on their insurance premium, they're saving money bumping up to a if those if that was the only change, right, is your deductibles? Yeah. And you save twenty dollars a month or twenty five, whatever, which, you know, we start looking at five dollars a week. I think Jeff needs to do <laughs> Right. Yeah. At that time, they should make, should make sure that, you know, okay, this is really what it means. And so right. So but they're. Don't try to lose money. Can, can you try right. and Oh, I agree. But they're looking at those people who don't use it at all. Right. Yeah. One doctor's visit, they're going to pay for it out of pocket, and they don't pay a thing all year for that young single person who doesn't go to the doctor's. So Jeff, if you can try and get that information on the earlier end, if we find out tomorrow that, oh yeah, it's going to save 50 cents for the town, 50 cents for the for the employee, but cost $20 more, you know, per month, $20 you know, per month for the deductible, okay, that's not worth it. But if we do find out it's reasonable, then we can make a decision about it being on Monday's or Tuesday's select board meeting. If, we, if, if it's completely unreasonable, there's no point in moving forward with that. But yeah, if it's a reasonable thing, I think it's worth discussing for sure. Okay. Um, okay. Whew, that's a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for letting me say oh, no. oh, thank Always. you for saying it. Keep I on, appreciate it. On. Like I said, that fresh set of eyes is wonderful when you haven't looked at it. No, and honestly, I'm, I'm I'm kind of feeling a little silly that I didn't make the connection with the the, the capital the capital money because I'm I'm in both of those committees and <laughs> I should have, um, but no, that that makes things a lot a lot easier to to absorb. So that's good. Anything else from anyone out there before we call it? Beautiful. I'm motion we adjourn. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Do nothing. 8 o'clock on the nose. Call it a day.